xin chào mừng quý vị và các bạn quay trở lại với phần 2 của chương trình tôi và Việt Nam trên kênh truyền hình FBNC phỏng vấn giáo sư James Friedel đến từ trường đại học Johns Hopkins Hoa Kỳ. So while we have you here, let's take the opportunity to discuss some economic matters. I know that you have done a lot of research about um, economic aspects of Vietnam. Is that because you are a professor teaching economics or because you find a lot of interesting things in Vietnam to do research about? Well, uh, yes. In my career, I have done a lot of research and writing on economic development. And uh, in uh, India and China and Taiwan, Hong Kong and around the world. I've lived in those places and studied their economy. As I mentioned earlier in 1990 when I came here, I decided this is an excellent opportunity to uh, to study a, an emerging economy, a brand an economy just breaking out of uh, you know launching uh, mm -hmm. industrialization and growth. So what better place to you know, make a capstone for the, my career than to study Vietnam. So I try to take lessons from all of the other countries I've studied and see how they apply in Vietnam and if any of those lessons could be useful mm -hmm. for you know, Vietnam to emulate. Mm -hmm. in the... What are the interesting, uh, interesting things that you see in Vietnam economy? Well, one of the things about Vietnam's economy is that it isn't unique. The situation that Vietnam inherited in 1990, in the early 1990s, is not unlike the situation that Taiwan faced in 1960, Thailand in 1970, China in 1980. All of those economies, like Vietnam, had were densely populated with a very large amount of unemployment, in the rural countryside and the challenge they all faced just like Vietnam faced in 1990 was to somehow create opportunity for industrialization to pull people out of low productive jobs in the agricultural sector, the rural sector and mm -hmm. find better, more productive, uh, more stable incomes in the urban industrial sector. Mm -hmm. All the countries faced the same challenge and I thought, well, Vietnam has conditions very much like those countries, so it should be able to emulate their experience mm -hmm. and succeed as well, if not better, mm -hmm. than other mm -hmm. countries. That is your own view, or your colleagues also share the same view with you? Well, you know, there's a saying about economists that uh, uh, one thing they don't share is opinions. Mm -hmm. You know, like you say in Vietnamese, uh, uh, <laughs> right. So the same is true in economics. Right. So um, a lot of people say that you are very optimistic regarding the country's, uh, the country's prospects. So um, do you think uh, that is true? One thing I'm certain of is that Vietnam has great potential. Right. That is the basis for my optimism, that the potential is there. How and when? Vietnam will realize that potential is, uh, you know, that's to be determined. Mm -hmm. So in the past, Vietnam has done quite well, started from a low base and achieved rapid growth, stability for a decade from 19, say, 94-5 to 2005-2006, one decade of very, very excellent performance. Not quite up to the standard of Taiwan and China and Thailand when they first launched, mm -hmm. they sort of launched their export-oriented industrialization, mm -hmm. but quite, Vietnam's performance was quite good. Mm -hmm. Now the challenges are more difficult because now we have to go from that base to, we have to go from that step to the next step. Mm -hmm. And of course it gets more difficult the farther up the ladder the country progresses. So regarding your optimism for um, Vietnam economy, I understand that that based on facts and figures as well, but is it also because that you love Vietnam so much that you are very optimistic about the country? No, I hope not. <laughs> I hope my optimism is based on you know, a solid empirical theoretical foundation, not on my own personal preference for living in Vietnam. Right. A lot of studies point out uh, many challenges of Vietnam economy. Do you agree with them? Of course, every 
Every society, every economy has challenges. Vietnam has very difficult challenges ahead, as I say, moving up the, the ladder of economic development presents many challenges and will require a lot of uh, very hard decisions on the part of the policymakers and the politicians in Vietnam. Mm -hmm. And how well Vietnam achieves its progress, mm -hmm. its uh, potential, will depend upon how rapidly and efficiently those decisions are made. Mm -hmm. I see. We would not have time to talk about all the challenges of Vietnam economy. However, do you think the challenges that is more um, because of the infra uh, infrastructure, uh, capital, or more about the institution, laws, and regulations? Well, I think uh, most economists who study Vietnam would say that one of the greatest challenges mm -hmm. is to improve the allocation especially of capital resources, of investment resources. Mm -hmm. Too much of the country's scarce investment resources mm -hmm. go into sectors and enterprises that don't have a, a high social rate of return. Mm -hmm. So in part this is because the market for capital, the financial system, doesn't operate particularly efficiently. There's lots of financial development that will be mm -hmm. required in Vietnam in order to ensure that uh, scarce resources are allocated more efficiently. And so a given amount of investment yields a greater rate of growth of income. I see. Mm -hmm. So that's one is financial sector. Mm -hmm. That's what we need right now to get employment growing and income growing and uh, improve the economic stability of the economy. Mm -hmm. But going forward, what we need is to begin to prepare for the next stage, which I think is principally going to require a lot of reforms in the educational sector. Mm -hmm. Because going forward, everybody talks in Vietnam about a knowledge economy. They wish Vietnam would transition right. from what it is today to a knowledge-based economy. Thưa quý vị, vừa rồi là phần 2 của chương trình Tôi và Việt Nam trên kênh truyền hình FBNC phỏng vấn giáo sư James Riddle đến từ trường đại học Johns Hopkins. Chúng tôi xin phép được quay trở lại trong vòng ít phút nữa.